CNN. Hannah sends her love. She's doing good day by day. And uh, we'll just keep moving forward from here. Thank you very much. That's the father of Hannah Anderson speaking at a family fundraiser. This is a short time ago. Hannah attended the fundraiser. It was her first public appearance since she was rescued from kidnapper James DiMaggio. CNN's Casey Wine is live in San Diego, the very latest. Casey, what was happening there tonight? And, and how would you describe Hannah Anderson's demeanor? Well, what's been going on here actually all day, Piers, has been a fundraiser for Hannah Anderson and her family. This restaurant has decided to donate 20% of the sales that it gets today to that family. And I can tell you this restaurant has been busy all day long. There's been a line. You can probably see the line behind me right now. People still waiting to get in. It's really going to help out the family, which is not a, a wealthy family. Hannah looked like a scared 16-year-old girl who did not want to be receiving the media attention that she is receiving. She uh, entered into the restaurant through the kitchen, uh, tried to avoid cameras, tried to avoid reporters. She seemed very uncomfortable. Once she was inside the restaurant with her peers, friends, family, neighbors, she was much more relaxed. She, her family members say she wanted to be here to thank all of those people who supported her, not only throughout her ordeal, also people that are supporting her as she now tries to build her life back again, Piers. Uh, Casey, just, just quickly, what do the family intend to do with the money that's being raised here? Well, they're not saying what they intend to do with it. In fact, her father said he may end up giving some of it back, depending on how much is going to be raised. At this particular event, they're expecting several thousand dollars to be raised. I mean, we're talking a family that has funeral expenses for a mother and Hannah's younger brother. She's got, uh, you know, living expenses going for her going ahead further her father lives on the east coast her grandparents live here we're not sure where she's actually going to end up staying so this is clearly a family that is in financial need and i think uh, that money's going to come in handy pierce casey wine thank you very much indeed so how is hannah dealing with the terrible trauma of her kidnapping joining me now is dr Ro rebecca bailey a phd in psychology is also jay-z dugar's therapist she's the author of safe kids smart parents also with me dr judy ho a clinical and forensic psychologist welcome to both of you uh, dr rebecca bailey let me start with you uh, obviously very different case to jay-z dugard and yet there are parallels i guess in how these young women recover from an ordeal like this are you slightly surprised as i am and not necessarily for the wrong reasons i'm just surprised that hannah addison within 36 48 hours of this terrible ordeal and discovering that her mother and son have both been brutally murdered by this man went online for a whole day engaging in a pretty frank and open discussion with random strangers today she had a big fundraiser it seems to me slightly odd behavior and that perhaps is not in her best interest but, but what do you think I'm not surprised at all. I think that um, different people process things differently. And this is her way of owning her story and somewhat taking control of the story. Do I have concerns about the possible um, things being taken out of context and blown up that she may not have intended to? I do. Um, but at the same time, there is a way that she's announcing this is not my shame, it is his shame. And I think that's really important. Um, she sounds like a bunch of 16-year-olds that I've worked mm. with, seen, have in my own home. Uh, Dr. Judy, I mean, the other area that still remains slightly mysterious is whether any part of this, Hannah Anderson may have gone voluntarily with James DiMaggio. We now know that they'd gone on various day trips to Malibu and so on, but exchanged apparently 13 phone calls on the day of this incident. Um, it, it sort of creates a, a potential picture that maybe at the start of this, she thought she was going on some new adventure, oblivious to the mayhem he had caused without her knowing about her mother and her son being killed and her brother being killed. Absolutely, Pierce, and I think, in a way, her announcing everything on social media and having this question and answer session was her way of kind of clarifying where she really was at. I bet that there are people who are thinking, hey, maybe you were complicit in this, or maybe you even, there might have been some kind of collaborations, and I think she really wants everybody to know. I mean, I mean either way, she remains a victim. 
I mean, right. she's 16 years old, and this guy clearly has some sort of crush on her. We know that now from what she said in the online uh, debate, and also clearly has groomed her in some way and pursued okay. her. She remains a victim, but it certainly it answers some of the questions about why perhaps when they met complete strangers on horseback, she didn't immediately raise a red flag. Absolutely. I mean, this is a family friend, a trusted individual of the family, one of her father's best friends. And also, she didn't want to be killed. And that's something that she said also online, that she was afraid that if she said something at that point when they ran into the horseback riders, that he would kill her if she said anything. So. And Dr. Dr. Bailey, Here, you've obviously worked very closely with JC Dugard. I mean, yeah, respond to that if you want to, yeah. Well, we, there's so much attention on the idea of the quote-unquote stranger abduction, but we know statistically that abductions are highly more likely with family members. And this is the takeaway from this, sadly, that we do really need to pay attention to some of the people in our kids' lives and try to understand their intentions. I in no way want to sound like I am blaming this family. But, you know, right. here is this older man spending a lot of time. So... And I really, I really want to bring that home, that, and, and that was the premise in our book over and over, is the importance of revisiting and talking to your children and understanding that non-familial abductions are rare. And this is, in my book, a familial abduction. Right. Yeah, I think that's right. Finally, Dr. Judy, just very quickly, if you can, what advice would you give to the Anderson family for trying to move on now? Obviously, that she's out and about tonight, Hannah. She's been engaging with people on, online, but what other things should she be doing, do you think? I think there's a big part of families who have been traumatized to try to normalize everything and try to bring everything back to a stable point. But there needs to be some type of processing. I think the online venue may not have been the best way because that could open her up to further criticism, a lot of questions she might not be prepared to handle. But I do think that there should be some type of processing going on, perhaps with a trusted professional, maybe with family friends to really lean on each other, not to ignore that this has happened. Dr. Judy, Dr. Rebecca Bailey, thank you both very much indeed. Coming next, explosive Michael Jackson wrongful death suit, dramatic new testimony, plus we'll speak exclusively to a Jackson